and weirdettes i am haunted and today we're going to do something a little different i am uh, going to be working on some weird weirdscapes uh terrain um this stuff it was a uh, part of a box they sent me it's called the pathways box now i do have it in sub assemblies um but this is the abandoned abandoned store or build, abandoned building anyways um the pieces slot together pretty well they were holding together great until I decided to um, until I decided to get on stream, and then they fell apart. Um, and I have yet to be able to get them back together in a satisfactory manner. So they may just stay off for the rest of the stream. Um, but beforehand, they were fitting together, had a nice push fit, fit uh, fitting, and were working great. And then they fell apart. So we'll see. Anyways, um, this is the model that we're going to be working on tonight or today day night anyways um so what we're going to try and do is emulate 
an everyday Joe's version of Angel Geraldez's paint job on these. And you can find that on the weird store. If you go to the weird store and go to uh, terrain, you'll find the pathway set. And in the pathway set, you of course will see all the uh, photos of the terrain painted by Angel. And Angel is an amazing painter, so this is not going to be his a duplication of it, but it, just like I said, a a close enough for the everyday person. And since not everybody uses an airbrush, and he uses an airbrush ex extensively, I'm going to show some methods that we can do to that will that will help with that um, achieve an airbrush like effect without being airbrush, if that makes sense. Um, so one of the first things that we'll have to do is um, have a little bit of sponge here, a little bit of uh, foam. This is from from a, um, I, I think this is a bet noir. It's got a little cat hair on it. Oops. Um, thing today. Um, but anyways, we're going to be doing a wet dry brush technique. And this is something that artist Opus has done on uh, their, their videos for their brush sets. Um, and I want to try it here. Um, but essentially what you're doing is you're doing a dry brush, but um, which means typically putting some paint on your brush, brushing almost every bit of it out of your brush. And then you're coming over here to this kind of scratchy wet pad, and putting just a little bit of moisture into the tip. And all that does is it helps direct the dry brushing more precisely. Um, and without getting that chalky, chunky, nubbly texture that you tend to end up with. Um, so that is the point of that. And like I said, the point of this was to do it without airbrushing. Now, I did in the, uh, in the sake of doing it quickly, I went ahead and primed and put my base coat for the walls in with airbrush. Okay. That's, that's, that's all that's done with airbrush. And you can do this with brush. It just takes time. I didn't want to do that today. So we focus on this. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> so let me bring up my reference photo. Okay, and here we go. And I do need to do something real quick. Let me get some stuff here. And I thought I had a pair of scissors, but I don't seem to have them here. Well, since I won't get it in there, we'll do it in this container here. Sorry about the reaching and stretching and all that good stuff. Got to have a little container to put that foam in, right? And what about a little blister from a... Uh, a metal miniature or infinity of some sort. This will work perfect. So now we have us a tray there. We've got our little sponge here, and hopefully it will fit in there just fine. It does. Good. We'll put some water in here. Are you, you're not even seeing this, are you guys? Oops. Let's get there. Get it to soak up a little bit. We don't want it soaking up too much, but get it to soak up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they are. I, I picked up a, a big old eight pack of these suckers. So yeah, they're they're pretty handy. All right. I'm gonna set that over to the side now. And uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and start working on the 
brick first. So, brick we're going to. Oops, are we gone again? The screen went black. Yikes. Oh, there we're back. Just a blip. Okay. Hey, as long as it's not a Thanos blip, okay? I don't want to step outside and see 50% of the universe gone. Uh, all right. So we're just going to come in here and work that in. Uh oh, did we lose sound? No. Okay, it was not on my end. Uh, is it better? I, I couldn't tell you. Hopefully it is. Now I'm going to suggest if you guys get these, if these get these pieces of terrain that you consider um, trying your best to paint them in sub assemblies, they have so much detail on the inside. And I'm what I'm going to be doing with mine is I'm actually going to magnetize at least one side on them. Um, so that you can open them up and I will be doing full interiors on them. So and this one already, you know, it's built that way. It's built with half a wall missing. So, or with one wall missing so that you can see the inside, but most of the others have detailed interiors that are really quite nice for, uh, potential dioramas as well as the table train. Like you could like leave one side off and have a three sided diorama room set up. Um, so they're really fantastic for that. Uh-oh, still can't hear me. Hmm. Hmm. Stranger and stranger. Looks like this is my day to be plagued with problems. Oh, I'm back. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so you probably didn't hear what I was saying about these buildings. Okay. Um, what I was saying was you probably want to, if you ever get into these weird skate buildings, um, try and build them in sub assemblies or at least, you know, with one wall so that you can get some of the interior details because they are fully detailed inside and out. Uh, some of them are really, really well done. I mean, they're all really well done, but, um, some of them would make great diorama. So what I'm planning, I'm planning on doing with mine, even though they are going to be for the table, um, I am going to magnetize a wall on each of them so that I will fully paint the interiors too. And then I'll be able to pull the wall off and have it, you know, maybe lit up with some LEDs or something like that. So you can see inside. I mean, they're kind of pricey. You, you want to get as much use out of them as you can, <laughs> but they're just gorgeous buildings. Hey, Jens, thanks for that. Like, uh, Virup, uh, Vir, 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 Virak, Virak, Virak. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought I would do something different. I, I usually do a lot of non-metallic metal, and it requires an extreme amount of concentration. And I am getting over the crud, so concentration is not kind of my forte right now. So I figured I would do something a little more chill. And this was something. Uh. That was sent to me, so I thought well, we're just going to go ahead and do some painting on this. It's a little bit, you know, lo more low key, right? Not low key, but low key. <laughs> But 
their their train is just gorgeous. I absolutely love it. I've I've <laughs> pretty well coveted it since it came out, and I've just now finally broken down and gotten it. Um, if uh, Kim's there or anybody else that can answer it, is there is there are the tiles? ever going to come out for it or did that idea get shelved also the the haunted spires or whatever it was the, the bigger building are those just not going to happen or are they further down the road in the development cycle their keyboard or checking on the answer but yeah that's something i've wondered if the the tiles will ever be made or if it was just an abandoned project i've got a friend that does a lot of of uh train crafting that's that's his gig on facebook is is train crafting and um he does really really good work um but when he saw this stuff he was like, that is one set of terrain I would not even attempt to build. He said, wouldn't need to. He says, that terrain is just perfect. And I've not heard him say that about much of anything. So that was kind of like high praise. But um, we, we talked about doing a uh, Malifaux table uh, co-project this year and unfortunately well not unfortunately he he um they added a new member to their family this year and so he has just not had the ability to do so new baby equals busy busy sure yeah the corners are brick as well okay i thought they were you just gotta be a little cautious where they come in at This is an older brush, so it's okay if I stab it around a little bit, but I would not recommend stabbing your brush, your good brush, into corners and recesses. It's not good for them. But like I said, in this, this case, this is an older brush, so it's, it's a okay for it. Got a little detail side there.
All right, so we're just kind of cutting this brick in. This is kind of tedious. We haven't got to the, the wet dry brush and stuff yet, but we will. makes a good train piece for a game in your opinion um that's that's a good question um i'm going to say for most people honestly not just for me but for most people would be something that's um either either can be assembled disassembled quickly so you can pack it in a box and then drop it on the table and boom you've got a table um, or something that is pre-painted. That's, that's what I'm going to say because most people, you know, they suffer the green model syndrome already and ter terrain is, is an even lower priority than models. So since the terrain is meant to set the scene, you know, the ambiance, the, the feel for the board, I would, I would say I'd like, I'd rather see a lot more painted terrain out there. Um, so I would say something that's pre-painted would be probably the best, best route to go with terrain. Um, it would of course need to be, you know, fit scale wise. It would need to, um, you know, provide the things terrain needs, uh, line of sight blocking, uh, that sort of thing. But yeah, um, for me, something that, or for most people, something that is pre-painted or easy to assemble, disassemble would be a good thing. Looking forward to seeing how this turns out. Method of painting weird skates is from pure laziness. I hear you. I hear you. Well, this is this is kind of lazy painting for me. I'm I'm kind of slapping it around with the brush a little bit. I'm not not crazy de crazy detailed. I mean, I don't want to get it everywhere, but I'm not. It's not as intense as when I'm doing a miniature for sure. I don't feel like. Uh, the tiniest little mistake or tiniest little movement the wrong way is going to wreck the model. That is one nice thing about terrain. <laughs> So uh, play where did you did you hear what I asked earlier about the uh, the terrain tiles the the gaming tiles and the sixth building yeah, the big mansion. Oh, I just asked was that something that had had been scrapped or pushed further down the development cycle or what, but you know, there was that the board that went with this stuff that was like nine, 12 by 12 tiles. And then there was a, a larger building. It's called the haunted spires or something like that. The haunted mansion. Um, did it just get nixed or pushed back for till after three E's done or what? Or do you know? <laughs> Or is it a no comment section? <laughs> there are still plans for future wars. That's cool. That's all I wanted to hear. Thank you. <laughs> nice. <laughs>
Now we will not leave all of these bricks uniform. That's just uh, as boring as you can tell from the Angel one. He does have a couple different colored bricks scattered in there, so we will be doing that. Um, we'll do this color and a wash and a dry brush, and then uh, we'll probably do sort out a couple other bricks, wash and dry brush around them as well. Yeah, same same Z color bricks are boring. Now, um, these walls are going to be um, that they look like wallpaper, um, and the interior on it is kind of a a magenta color. So we'll be doing our violet magenta workup from Chimera. For the interior walls and it's going to look really striking against that uh you can buy darkness blue green uh trim here I probably need to invest in stock in this because I use this color so much. <laughs> Black red is just it's one of my favorites. It uh, dries really. It's actually drying lighter in this, but it's because I'm going, I'm going lightly with it, like not going, um, not slapping it on too, too harsh. So the. Uh, the gray primer is kind of popping through a little bit. Um, but when you put a second coat on there and get some, some opacity on it, it's a really rich black, brown. So it's almost like, I hate to say it, it's almost like dry blood. It's, it's a really good color. Um, and I use it for the basis of all my, my reds. And uh, if you throw like a violet or purple wash down in it, 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 uh, really flares up nicely. Mm -hmm. Just slapping down some bread, walking on down the brick road. Okay. Got the brick on this corner here. And we'll get the, the walls kind of sitting off there by itself. One of the things I will do occasionally, if I've got the time, if it's a, you know, like a base versus a, a whole building, I will oftentimes uh, paint a nice little light gray down first or just leave the primer there and paint each brick individually and keeping the grout look there. But, you know, grout varies in color. Grout is not always gray white, depending on the brick tone. Sometimes it's orange. Sometimes it's brick red. Um, sometimes it's tan. So not always is it that, you know, light gray color. So um, if you're doing something in a semi hurry, there's nothing wrong with doing what I'm doing and just leaving it brick. So just something to keep in mind, but you can vary the look up if you, if you want to put in, you, know, you got a couple 
buildings that have brick side by side or something like that, you want to uh, give them some individuality, you can do the, the colored mortar trick and, and change up the color. But it does, like I said, it's going to require you to uh, paint the bricks individually, which does increase the amount of time you're going to be spending on the project. Um, now, you could potentially try and uh, paint that color, you know, that, that uh, mortar color, and then dry brush the bricks, and you could potentially do that. Um, so yeah, just another option that you've got to work with in your arsenal of things that you can do. So I'm still on the screen. Oops, looks like I'm frozen. Are we getting the rainbow faces today when it freezes up like that or what? Oh, there it is. Okay, it's working again. I was going to say, if we were, I could say, eh, camera can't handle my awesomeness either, Doug. <laughs> but... Just random hiccup. I don't know. That's weird. You know, it, it honestly, it could be Twitch. So seriously, um, depending on, you know, the bandwidth, if there's a lot of popular streamers on there, we're not partnered. <laughs> just, just regular beautiful chat. Oh, thank you, man. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, if there's a lot of really popular streamers on, they dedicate the bandwidth to them. And since we're not partners, we don't get dedicated bandwidth. So that could potentially be it as well. Not always a problem on on your end or my, you know, the other streamers end or whatever. Um, sometimes it can just be Twitch itself. When I when I first started streaming, that was my biggest push for partner was so that I wouldn't have to worry about bandwidth issues. That and more emotes because I wouldn't have a ton of emotes. Um, <laughs> but I kind of given up on that dream. I don't think I'll ever make partner. I wish I had been able to uh, pick up my copy of uh, Vagrant Song from from other Jess before uh, before I was put into exile, but unfortunately, I, uh, I am now in the isolation stage. So <laughs> going a bit stir crazy. It's funny. I'm I'm, I'm usually I usually don't want to go anywhere, but I'm, I'm very homebody most of the time. But when you're told you can't go anywhere, you really want to go. <laughs> soon, though. Yes, yes, soon. Hopefully. The funny thing is, I don't, I don't feel sick. Like, I feel like a little lower energy than normal, right? That's that's about it. And but the, the temperature just will not go away. I've been running 99 degrees basically 24/7 for like the last three and a half four days. 99.8, 99.7, 99 99.9, occasionally hitting 101, and that's just that's been the the result of it. But I went out. Uh, yesterday to a rapid testing facility. So I'll hopefully know something tomorrow. Um, well, it was indeed the, 
the galloping COVID or not. Because, you know, you don't always get super duper sick. My, my cousins have both had it and they got the mildest symptoms. Like uh, cousin one got just a stuffy nose. Cousin two just lost her sense of taste. Um, and of course, each were accompanied with headache or uh, uh, temperatures. Mine has been headache and temperature. So just could be one of those things. We have strong immune systems, but not strong enough to fight off those symptoms or something. And this is after having uh, the first vac still managed to get it with potent or think I may have gotten it with that one exposure in a convenience store because I forgot to put my mask on to run in and pay cash. So no matter how quick the trip is into the store, folks, remember wear your mask. This has been today's uh, <clears throat> public service announcement via Haunted. All right. I about got them bricks knocked in. Whew, finally. Whew. So many bricks. And just imagine we're not painting them individually. We're just doing, you know, slapping paint on them. Good God. Can you imagine if we're trying to keep the crowd in there too? We'd, we'd be at this for like three weeks. So much brick. <laughs> Okay, so get that just a wee bit up in there. I think I kind of missed that one just a little bit. Oh, nope, there's some at the corner. Dang, gum it. There's just brick everywhere. You use a little finger eraser there. Hope you guys saw that. It's quick. You have to be careful. You have to be on the lookout for the finger eraser. Okay. So I think we've got our brick taken care of. It's still not fully dried in some places, though. Hmm. That's annoying. May have to let it dry a little bit more. Um, well, you just defeated a printer for your office. <laughs> nice. Did you get a trophy or a plaque? <laughs> This is fully dry. That's amazing how long this is taking to dry. Okay. Um, we may go ahead. I don't want to sit here and just wait for that to dry. You better. You got gratitude. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. So, like I said, I don't want to sit here and just wait for this to dry. So, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of uh, um, other color in while we're waiting. 
but we may have to touch this back up later uh, once we do our dry brushing. But it won't hurt to go ahead and put it in now. This is a uh, Incubi Darkness, which I believe is the closest color approximation I can come up with to what Angel was using. I am going to get my glasses. I feel like I'm leaning forward a little too much. David Lockwood, thank you for that follow. I've never seen Incubi Darkness be so so transparent or translucent before, but it is definitely translucent on this. Uh, I am using a bit of water, so that's making part of it that way. But wow, really translucent today. So I'm just continue to work this uh, Incubi Darkness up a little bit while we are waiting for our brick to dry. As soon as it dries, we'll get the wash going. And we'll be on another thing. You know, I could break the hairdryer out. That would make it go quicker, but we'd have to mute the, the mic because otherwise it'd blow people's eardrums out. Dear Lord, do you see what I forgot? A big old patch of bricks right there, right there on the front of this building. I did not see them. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy.
So I started watching an interesting anime last night. This one's called uh, um, Ergo Proxy. Very interesting, um, kind of high gothic um, animation style, or at least on the the like intro uh, song portion of it was. It's kind of a strange one though. You may have also made that mistake on the ones you made. <laughs> I'm getting good company then. <laughs> may as well get it started though, right? Because it's taking so long to dry. Part of the reason is I put so much water in it so it would flow down the cracks. It's going to take a while to dry. So that was an unfortunate side effect of trying to get the it to flow in there better. Sorry about that. Good old spam call. Right in the middle of stream, of course. I uh, usually put my phone on do not disturb. I kind of forgot to. I was in a bit of a rush. Okay. Uh, Kim, if, if you want me to try and hurry it up with the, the hairdryer, I will break it out, but you'll have to like watch for a hand signal when I'm, I'm done. Or I can message you real quick in Discord or something like that. But it would definitely, it definitely speed up the, the brick drying time and the wash drying time that will be coming later. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, if you would go ahead and throw me on mute and I'll 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 message you in Discord when I'm ready.
PK. Oops. Hi. So, you got the go, Jess? Oh, sorry to see that, Dan. Have a good day or a good evening for you. Thanks for hanging out. I do appreciate it. Hope you can hear me. Okay, so hopefully we're back on volume now. Um, I'm just going to do this over just a wee bit here. More on me, or more on the model now. So... This is not your typical color that I'm putting on here. In case you haven't noticed, this is a purple wash. And I think this purple is going to work really nicely with our brick. Giving us some extra depth, as well as uh, not being typically black or typically brown. It should give us a neat color. I think this is going to be a, a nice... Again, this is, I think, the color he kind of used, kind of a purpley red. So... That's what we're going with. At least that's the idea. Okay. Well, we're going to go through some of this today. We're going to go through some of our purple wash. I think this gives a really nice coloration of that brick. Not your typical brick, but not so far away that you wouldn't say, oh, this brick, right? That's the idea, I think. Kind of... Malifoeum flavor of brick. Similar, but not the same. Miss a little bit there. We can patch that up later. Not a big deal. because we're going to be kind of doing a kind of orange highlight for the bricks. We'll look good with the purple because it'll be a split complement. Uh, yellow is purple's complement, but orange is a split complement. So it should, should give it a nice look, I think.
Okay. And we'll either be him to work on something else while this dries, or we'll have to break out the hair dryer again. <laughs> We're going to go through this whole thing a purple wash. <laughs> By the time I finish these six buildings or five buildings. Oh, four buildings? Four buildings and a lot of pathways, I think it is. Okay, work on this side over here. Can you guys tell the difference that purple wash makes in this brick? Kind of adds a, a richness to it and a, and, a, and a strangeness to it. You know, because brick doesn't usually have this purple cast to it. I mean, it does, but not like a rich purple. Hoping this is working out the way the, the color detectors in my eyes said it was. <laughs> I, I do a really, it's one of my things I can look at a picture and kind of dissect usually what color somebody used most of the time. This one I'm a little, we're kind of unsure on. We'll see how it ends up. Done with that. Bone done. Okay. Bottom inside there done. Nope. We have not done this portion here. It may not be ready for it, but we'll do it anyways. Here we go. Now. We, um... Probably ought to go ahead and do the mute thing again so I can get some, get the hair dryer back out. So let me know if you can do that. Uh,
Let's head back to volume, I guess, <laughs> if you can hear me. There. Kim. Hey, Kim. Waiting for volume to come back. <laughs> oh, volume is back. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, gosh, she can't hear me. No. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so we're back. We did some hair drying. Um, got most of it fully dry. Like This piece is pretty good, of course. It popped out naturally. So uh, it was staying in there pretty nice and tight until it got heated up with a hairdryer and then said, nope, nope, I'm not going to stay there no more. But I think it will hold again. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we got most of that uh, dried. It will, this wall for sure will be safe to dry brush here in just a second. It's like one little wet spot down in there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, getting out my, my dry brush. And we're going to start with a little bit of um, Calvary Brown. Um, this is on, of course, my favorite elf brush. Um, I know I have been, I have pushed these brushes before saying they're so good but i went to look for more the other night and they have gone vegan so they're full synthetic now and i don't know if they're good anymore thanks to that which is kind of a bummer because i i don't know what uh brush to use now So we're just kind of dry brushing, catching some of the edges there without getting on the other if we can. Now, um, this is actual just dry, dry brushing. Um, it's the first coat we're going to go a little um, heavier and wetter, so it won't matter so much about the, uh, the wet component. You love your elf brush or for dry brushing. Now, how long ago did you buy this? Because I got this back in like 2013 ish. I was probably one of the first people that used a makeup brush. <laughs> See, I've only recently been hearing about it, and I've been using them for quite some time. Well, since 2013, 2000, yeah, 2013. I say 2012, but it was 2013. Oh, okay. Well, if, if it's still good in 2016, maybe they're still good now. I don't know. Maybe that was a recent switch to the vegan. 
I'll have to, I mean, it's not like you're wasting a whole lot of money. I think they're still a dollar fifty, dollar seventy-five, two dollars, something like that. So it's not like you're still it's not like you're spending a whole lot to try it and see. Um I just I know I've been telling a lot of people about the brush and I was like, God, I've been telling them all this. And then I go to get one and realize, oh no, it's not the same brush I had when I or when I that I first got. So uh I'm gonna have to go out and see if I need to change my tune. Main thing is seeing if I can find a replacement. I mean, it might be hard to find something as cheap that as as good as these. Can you see the the brick popping out a little bit better now? Really like it against that uh, that purple wash. There we go, cavalry brown. There we go. All my paints are nice and warm and bubbling up to the top when I pull the cap off. Because I ran the hair dryer so long right across them. So they got hot and are expanding. So when I pull the lid off, they're just like literally bubbling up. <laughs> like the Beverly Hillbillies. Up from the ground comes a bubbling crude. <laughs> Black gold. Texas tea. <laughs> A long time since I've seen that show. I still got a little too much paint on it, so let's rip some more off there. I mean, it won't kill it, but you know, a little heavy. Kind of change the directions up occasionally and catch the other sides on these bricks here. Which direction you're slinging that brush around. Okay, so getting a nice little coloration going down here. Get our edging cut in. Didn't get it on the gray too much either, which is nice. Always a good thing.
Okay, here we go. I actually think I missed a brick right there. Good Lord. How did I do that, guys? Hey, I am brush priming. I did not brush prime it. I did, uh, did airbrush prime it. Um, and this is actually a different color from the primer. As you can see, this is primer and this is not. So there is a difference there. This kind of a bluish white, um, which is what we'll be working up from on the base of the walls. Um, but yeah. Like I said, we're trying to keep it air, airbrush free um, because we want to show people that you can get a good result. Um, for train just using your brushes and dry brushes and uh you know like a rattle can you don't have to don't have to have an airbrush to get cool cool terrain how you doing salty good to see you And like I said, we had a couple, we're going to pick out a couple bricks to do in the lighter color, and then they'll get uh, edged a lighter color than that, of course, so for them to stick out. But I'm going to do the majority first with the other. We don't want to do too many of them. We do want a couple little like accent bricks in here. So that's what we're doing right now. These are a slightly lighter color. Uh, maybe get this one here that I missed earlier with the original color. Do that. This one. Uh -huh. Yeah, front and back got a match, right? There. Middle one. Okay, 
And I think that'll be it for this one. And we'll uh, paint a couple accent bricks on the other wall here. Maybe not on the small. I'm not going to worry about it. Mm, which one we want to do? All just a matter of randomization. Not really. Uh, just kind of pick and choose. But you don't want them too too many, and you don't want too few. Um, you can always come back in and add some more if you need them later. Like I said, you know, not all bricks are the exact same color, so a couple of accent bricks like this will help bring a little realism into a brick wall. Then we'll get a lighter color edging on them. For that, we'll use a Vallejo orange brown. And we're going to go to a slightly thinner brush here because, yeah, detail work. And you could probably wash over it if you wanted to um, with the original wash, that purple wash. Um, and it would probably look even better, but I, I'm just not willing to take the time for more wash to dry. So we're just going to kind of come in and quickly hand edge the brick and forget about the, the wash on it. You may want to use that wash if, if it's in a spot where it kind of needs to do some coverage. Yeah, you can do it there, but not really required. Like I said, just that got a little heavy handed because it's such a small brick. edge that baby in and move on to the next one. Drop that. Now this one I'm probably going to come up put a little purple wash around it just to kind of separate it from the uh, the plaster area. 
because it was a uh, it was an afterthought. <laughs> on camera frame. I don't know if I am or not, though. There's a, the one kind of disadvantage with the big stuff like this is that you can't always get it in frame easily and hold it steady at the same time. Once we get done with the brick, then we'll start moving on back to the uh, that trim and some of the plaster. No. So, brick is uh, pretty well done. I'm going to come back in here and edge that just a wee bit manually because it did not catch much. Know how I didn't get the corners very well. These should have been well hit, but they just didn't quite get much. Those got it, but one on the other side. Hmm. Strange. Anyways, uh, brick is basically done now. We'll, uh, we'll tidy up a few little things and then move on to the next section. Get some of these in the, the lower corners because they just didn't quite get much of the dry brush. Wash again. Yeah. 
It's so quiet. What are you folks working on today? So I don't think I've got any missing spots of paint here. It seems like I saw one break that didn't quite have a... There she is. I knew there was one. It's always going to be that one. Now it has been. Painting guild models from the old star box. Oh. Oh. Are you, uh... Are you... Uh, rusty, bloody, or bloody, rusty, whatever on, on Instagram. Because I've seen somebody with that name doing the old guild box. Oh. Bloody, rusty, bloody Rusty Studios or something like that. But anyways, they've been doing the, the old Lady Justice box as well. Um, and it looks really good. I actually, I like uh, the one E Lady Justice sculpt made more than I did the uh, the two E and the three E. So I picked up the old box to to use her for the master. I didn't like the squatty pose, and I didn't like the the wildly swinging sword. She looked like she'd never held a sword in her life in that sculpt. So I um, I went with the old one. Oh, it's on, okay. So somebody else is doing that particular same set at the same time. That's funny. <laughs> Anyways, well, that's awesome. You're a good company. Maybe I'm seeing your post and his post together and they're they're blending together. Maybe that's it. Well, you should be well practiced at it then, right? <laughs> Oh, I got all up on my wall there. Jeez. That's not cool. I'll fix that later. And third time is much faster. I bet. <laughs> yeah, I, I do kind of like the charm of some of the second edition models. Uh, I really do. I mean, I, I still prefer, most of the time, still prefer the second or third edition. Um, but some of the some of the old metal models really have a lot of a lot of charm to them. A lot of, I don't know, just something, a special something that the the plastic just doesn't capture. Um, like the mysterious emissary for um, Neverborn, I uh, I like the metal better, so I went on to the uh, Alpha Classics page and bought that one. The Spider Girl just didn't didn't make as much sense growing into the tree. Of course, the other one doesn't either, but at least that one is a wooden puppet, you know. So it makes a little bit more sense, you know. Even have their little uh, puppet control stick on their back. So that one makes a little more sense to me that it would actually, I don't know. Yeah. I remember you telling me that and I was going to pick it up and now she's sold out. I was like, Oh, I missed my opportunity. <laughs> yeah. That was one I was going to get and I totally, totally bombed it.
I did paint mine. Like I said, these this was meant to be kind of quickie paint job, not like super duper pretty or anything. So, but I got mine painted now. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I was trying to get that line cut in. I was just completely silent. But I am I'm anxious to get these painted up and get them on my board. I am uh I'm building a very interesting board. That will, um, using fiber optics, that I'll be able to switch, hit a switch on the side, and it will change the lights underneath to light up the deployment lines that I've chosen. So I'm going to have rows and rows of fiber optics set up in it, and each one is corresponding to a different switch. So I'll have all the deployment zones set up, and... Press a button and then it'll light up the corresponding zone on the board. I'm planning to have a uh, fiber optic street lamps and all that good stuff as well. So we'll have the ambient lighting as well as the, uh, the setup lighting. do a couple of coats here because I got it really thin trying to not to clomp it on there too much. I mean three or four coats of inky pie darkness to do it. Continue this color right through here.
little bit up in here. I could probably make my life a whole lot easier if I just pop that wall off and not try and trace the, the, the post, but you know me. I just got the wall to stick again. I'm not going to do that. I really like this color combination. I was I was not really sure of it. I mean, not sure of it on my end, um, but I don't know what he's doing. I like it. Now I'm starting to see it together. I'm starting to see my colors with it in there. I'm liking it. The only bad thing about these big buildings is trying to hold them without momicking the paint too much. And, well, you're just going to have to settle for momicking the paint a little bit. <laughs> I do a really good job of washing my hands before I start working on a miniature. And I try not to rub my face or forehead or anything like that. Especially your nose, because you will get nose grease on your hands real quick. Um, which, nose grease has its purposes, but definitely not on your miniatures. If you scratch a very expensive carbon fiber dash piece, nose grease works great to cover that up, though. <laughs> Handy hint from a long time custom car stereo installer <laughs> if you scratch the $1,200 carbon fiber panel in a NSX wipe a little nose grease on it <laughs> they won't know till they go to get it detailed the next time and by then it's not your problem forget that when I, I was trying to pull that sucker out and my pick slipped and dug this big scratch in that bezel and I called up the Acura dealership with this sinking feeling in my stomach because I knew it was going to be expensive and they're like yeah it's $1,200 to replace that part and I was like uh <laughs> so uh my friend Jimbo he's like try a little nose grease I'm like nose grease okay and it worked. It worked flawlessly. I figured that would get some reactions out of people, but apparently not. Everybody snoozing at the wheel. <laughs>
<laughs> Eyeballs deep in lore, huh? I see. I see. Are you reading the uh, Malfo Burns book? I I actually have just gotten started reading the lore myself. Um, I asked Jess for recommendations, and she put put me on a. God, which one was it? It's got the it's got the duets on the front. Um, I can't think of the name of it. But anyways, it's one of the. I think one of the first, or one of the early one e books, or one of the early two e books. One of the two. I can't remember. And uh, I started reading it, but I've not gotten too horribly far. Good coverage there. We got pretty decent coverage. Not great, but decent. Come on. Corner here a little bit. Get that one better. Oops. Damn. <laughs> Gotta be careful when you got wet edges. Rising Powers. Thank you. That's the one. Yep, that's the one she recommended. And uh, I've been working on that one. So I was like, well, uh, where should I start? You know, chronologically slash balance of best stories versus furthest back, I guess, is what I, what I asked for. And that was the one she pointed me to. Very good call. They're play weird. Nailed it in the first try. Getting there with the coverage. This said so when you put it on a little thin, it takes a billion and a half coats to get coverage with this coat. Oh, 15 minute warning? Oh, I thought we were going to six today. That's what it said on the sheet, so.
Oh, okay. Woo. I mean, I'm I'm okay either way, but yeah, that's what I would plan on. But when, when I say a time, I assume that's you know start time, end time, and because I'm always 15 minutes early, anyways. So when I see times out, I expect that's when you're supposed to be there. And I'm always 15 early and usually 15 minutes late, <laughs> late leaving. So it's just the way I am. Grandpa beat that into me with a stick. Always 15 minutes early. Okay, that done there. Bless you, cat. Okay, let's go ahead and um, work on the door because that's the inner portion there. So we'll go work on the door real quick because we're going to be doing the frame the same incubi darkness here. So I may as well go ahead and get the door cut in. So let's do that real quick. Um, he has a much lighter door. I'm going to see real quick. Uh, you know what? We'll, we'll just, we'll try this one. We'll do more than brown. That's close enough to Monster Brown, I think. Looks a little bit orange right now. Hopefully we can fix that up. With uh, some Agrax Earth Shade and stuff. Move then here, and then we'll switch to the back side and do the back door. And then hopefully by then this one will be dry and get the wash started on it. We did not thin our paints as much as we normally do because we're just not wanting to take 10 hours to dry, so. <laughs>
I actually rewatched an old, old, uh, well, I can't say old. It was 2016, I guess. Um, a show that I, I like called Wayward Pines. And, uh, you know, the second season was a little rough to get started because they, they had that weird transition between uh, main characters not being there anymore. But I think the show was pretty good. I wish they had kept it going. Unfortunately, it did not catch on. Sci-fi shows just don't, you know, even if they're sci-fi apocalyptic, whatever, sci-fi shows just don't make it on TV, unfortunately. But if you've not seen it, it's, it's definitely worth a watch. If you have a Hulu or FX, I think you can watch it on there. I think the one thing they did do, and I don't know if it was because it, it made the story track better, but they exposed the big gotcha, the big, holy crap, the the surprise way too early, like the fourth episode, you knew what was going on. Like the, the full, the big picture thing, I guess. Um, you still had all the, you know, intrigue and the action in between and stuff, but like the big surprise was revealed very early. I don't know if it was they, they'd had a leak um, or not. But it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, Kim, can we get a, a quick mute? I'm going to try and dry this door real quick. Just... All righty, we are back. Just had to do a quick little, uh, quick little washy washy, or not washy washy, but a, a, hand, a hair dryer wash to uh, dry up some of that paint there. Um, we're about out of that, so we're just going to have to dig into the big bucket. <clears throat> One thing about using the Vallejo um, wash, while I love the big 200 millimeter, milliliter, milliliter, milliliter size, 
which is the same size, uh, price as a small GW double wash. Um, the one thing you have to do is make sure your, your brush is extremely dry first. If you have any water in it, it will leave these weird white tidal pools. So you definitely don't want that. We're um, kind of swiping out the, the excess and the bubbles and stuff like that. So hopefully this will reduce the amount of, of uh, frosting that we get with it. But also we, we did uh, make sure our brush was really dry before we, we started slathering it on. So hopefully that will fix it as well. But yeah, that is one of those things with this particular wash a wet brush is a bad thing with it. Okay. Those will get dried up. transferring any over. Um, got a brick cut in pretty good. Um, this is the teals cut in pretty good. Um, I think what I'm going to do before I move on to trimming the blue green um, around the door and doing the detail and working this door is what I'm going to start doing is working up um, this area a little bit. So we're going to get a little bit of uh, intermediate blue. We're probably going to go ahead and get do two drops because we're going to need a good bit of this. going to do a one to three ratio with a pale blue pale blue being the three and I think that will give us a nice little highlight color and then again we're going to be working on this with uh, with our dry brush and we're going to kind of just spackle it on there I think that's almost the exact same color we've got on here already. So we need to go two more drops of this. So one to four. It was a uh, very big rush at the beginning of stream trying to get that color down before stream started. And I kind of forgot what the ratio was. So. 
we have to experiment to get back to it. Always write your colors down, kitties. Number one hint. I actually have a journal. It's not uh, handy, but I actually do have a journal that I keep uh, that I keep common recipes in. Um, things that I have done for commissions and such, especially things that might need to be repeated. Um, so like somebody brings me uh, 10 thunders and I know I'm probably going to do some more 10 thunders for them later. At some point I make sure I write down every single color combo I use, even including the bases. That way I can recreate it if necessary. I think, I think what we're going to have to do is that is one to four. We're going to go to one to four with a couple drops of water, uh, white in it. I said water. I think that will lighten it up then. Goodness. A lot of mixy dixie to get it to where I want it. So when you're doing dry brush, of course, you know, like I said you dip it in your paint and you wipe as much of the paint off till it's almost gone on a paper towel, right? And uh, you come in, you start light, 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 like lightly hitting it across these surfaces, especially the rough surf surfaces. And the surfaces that aren't rough, you can always kind of like dip dab like this. Get a little bit of texture in there that way. I may actually have to come and put a wash in so that stands out more. So that's just not catching it. Just not enough. You can see it. Well, actually, you can't on the screen. Yeah, it's real hard to see. Let's see what color would be best for his recesses. Looks like. Actually, we don't have the other side for that show. Looks like he almost did a pink color. That's very strange. But he also did very pinky bricks too. Hmm. In that corner. That's very strange. <sighs> I do let me see, I do have a pretty wash. Try it and see how it works. So I think it might be just a little too light. Yeah, that's way too light for what we're doing. Hmm. Let's see here. Maybe we can just thin intermediate blue 
That'd make enough of a shade, I think. Let's do that. Finger eraser to the rescue. <laughs> That's always a good thing to have. Some down in here. Try not to get it on your brick because that could cause problems. I'm going to put some down here as well, down in these recesses, these crevices, rat cracks, whatever. And we'll work it out with the uh, dry brush later. Come on up on the edge there, too. it into these cracks we may even come and reinforce it with a little bit of, of um, dark gray or black just to make sure that those pop I just want to wait, wait and see what it does when it's drying so we'll be doing that well, looks like I missed another brick how about that just another brick in the wall that I missed And, uh, yeah, we'll have a nice place to start come tomorrow when we continue work on this. Because we are get, getting up there. We got, we're at our new 15-minute warning. I may do a little bit of the trim work and stuff off screen because it does take a lot of time because y'all have seen me do edging. Y'all know what I do. It's, it's not, it's not rocket science. It's just steady hand. It's all it takes. Um, so I may do some of that tonight. So we're not, so we have a, a chance of finishing this tomorrow. It may be a little, it may be dark enough. We'll have to see for sure. But that's, that's looking pretty good there. We might be able to, to work with that without going to black. Of course, we're going to get this side too. Is that, uh, 
Might have been molding there. Ah. At least I may look for for areas that will take multiple coats, like the red. That'll take multiple coats as well. So I may do that as tonight too, just just to get some of the stuff out of the way that that will take extra time, and then we can work on the techniques, the technical portion. Not, nothing but that tomorrow, rather than doing a whole lot of hair drying and waiting thing. Okay. I am pretty happy with the bricks. I like the color of the bricks. Like I said they're not they're not just your typical brick color, but they are 100% recognizable as bricks. That purple wash really really set them off, I think. Okay, let's get this other wall here. And there's another brick missed. My goodness, I missed a lot of bricks. Why didn't you guys tell me I missed so many bricks? There's one right down there, too. Wow. We missed a crap load of bricks, guys. Like a metric crap load. We will get it. Just had to come back and check those out later. Now that we see that color going down, it does make it easier to identify them. So that's plaster or or uh, adobe or whatever, and it backs up to the part that's supposed to be the teal. Hmm. We may have to do a separate changeover color there. So we'll work on this, getting this blended back in and edged and the, the main walls textured to my row. I 
is I want it to show people that you could paint. I mean, obviously you can paint train without an airbrush, but I'm hoping we have a nice effect when we're done. Is what we're shooting for. Without an overly large investment of time. <laughs> I mean, I'm not the fastest painter, right? But um, so yeah, we uh I'm getting up there close. Let's see here. Washing the door, still not quite finished. Still a little wet. Around that sign there. this go a little bit of a shadow there thing and maybe same here Recess there. A little bit of a, a shadow from that sign. Probably way too much for a piece of paper, but you know, whatever. Okay, I think we are at the three or four minute mark there. So I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. And um, you can check. Uh, my other work and stuff on my social medias. So when uh, Kim posts that, it'll be a willow link. It has a link to one single link links to all my, my social media. So you can find me on Facebook or, or Twitches because I have two of them and um, the Instagrams and book of faces and all of that good stuff. Um, and we'll come back tomorrow and we'll try and finish this little building up. I mean, uh, May not finish it, um, but we're going to at least.